So here I have a kneaded eraser and I'm just going to, the fun thing is that a softer graphite pencil is being picked up quite easily but the harder pencil is not. I did some testing already over here and as you can see here there was this messy space, messy area and it's no longer messy at all. Let's do this. It's really working very well. So I'm not doing this to get rid of all the graphite. Actually, I would love to see a lot of graphite. Now, actually, I think I should stop recording now because of these very annoying waves that come that are visible sometimes. It's really not nice. You know, when I am recording in daylight, there is no problem at all. Kneaded erasers really are very handy. I don't use them that often. This is the first time that I'm really using it. Them, I, I've had kneaded erasers for years, but this one also, but uh, never, used, never used it. But in this case, it's really, really working fine to clean up everything. Now I think this part of the drawing needs a little bit more cleaning up. So now what should I do? Stop and continue tomorrow or continue. I think I should uh, should wait until tomorrow, but I'm really not wanting to. I want to continue the joy. Because that is really what it's like for me to pick up a pencil or or a brush or or a soft pastel then uh, if I pick up a pencil don't ask me why but for some reason my mind suddenly knows how to focus on only that pencil or that brush and it completely dedicates itself to the joy 
that comes with painting and drawing and creating. So when I am when I am drawing or coloring, I am completely, completely at peace. Even if there is a turmoil in my life, then still, I, the moment I start coloring, my mind becomes completely quiet and at peace. That is such a wonderful thing to happen and I wish for each and every one of you that you will have something in your life that will make your brain to shut up and only experience the joy of whatever you're doing. I know there are people who are experience exactly experiencing exactly the same when they are uh, uh, playing an instrument or singing or doing sports, reading a book, writing a book, being in nature, And for me, nature and arts are the easiest ways into peace for me. I love music, I love teaching, I love it all, but, and I sometimes, I do have this, well, I just feel joy when I am teaching and singing, but what I feel, the quietness and the peacefulness that comes with the coloring and painting, that is, I don't experience that with music. With music, it's always, there's always a little voice telling me, but you must do it perfectly. You must do good. You must sing in tune. And your vibrato must be perfect. And your sound must be this. And your pronunciation must be that. But when it comes to painting and drawing, for some reason, my mind naturally concentrates on that one step that is important at that very moment. I think that is the natural state of mind of humans. But we forgot to train that. We lost that. So, I think the sketch is done. The sketching is done. And I'm going to continue tomorrow. So, I will now show you my goody goody box. <laughs> this is the new larger watercolor box. And here are my colors. I have a little. Uh, Um, I forgot the name, the word for this. I will write down the exact color name. Now there, there is a color that I have here twice, that is lemon yellow. I have it over here and over there because it's the lightest color in my palette and I use it very often. And it gets smudgy very often. So I put in one to use uh, with greens and blues, 
with the cooler tones and this one I put in to use with the pinks and the oranges and reds that prevents um, too much dirt in this uh, lemon yellow and um, I also had a Windsor Windsor and Newton Windsor red that was not in the set and um, I, I don't I'm not sure if I'm going to use it in this painting but as you can see I have one two three four five I have five look that's should be like that I can't cannot handle that <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six reddish tones and a dark yellow. This is a purple and then I have four blue, two greens. What's this? Oh, this is a paint gray, black, dark browns. Now you don't need that many colors. If you have a light yellow, a darker yellow or an orange, and you have one or two reds, a cooler one and a warmer one, that would be nice, then you're fine. If you have, you, you really don't need any greens because you can mix them, yellow with a blue, you can mix, uh, mix all the greens you want. So if you have one or two blues, a couple of earth tones, I have a darker browns. I like this one, the sienna. Burnt Sienna. Love it. Absolutely love it. So, that's all. You don't need those that many colors. I like uh, mixing on my paper. I have found a, that out. So, um, but whenever the, I use a color that you don't have, um, mixing on the palette may help. And I will try to uh, show you how to do that. So, what I'm going to use also is a uh, Caran d'Ache water, water brush. And here I have another one, Pentel water brush. This is a big one. But first, I think tomorrow I'm going to start with a larger brush. Yeah. I'm going to do something extremely scary, but I've done it before and it turned out so, so well. So I hope this is going to work. So this is it for tonight. And uh, I will continue in the morning. Bye bye. It is time to start the painting. Almost, almost. First I'm going to do something else. The most complicated thing in this drawing, I think, are the two bells. Uh, well, that is to say, if I want to make these two to look shiny, I will have to do some studying on painting shiny surfaces. And I went up to the attic and I found this tiny little Christmas ornament, Christmas bell and this gives quite a good impression on how to paint the, um, the shiny surface. Now I will do it quite not too complicated it's the first time that I do that. And I have two other very shiny, two foxes. Now, if you see, a, you can see a shape like this. It, it is very, very complicated making, painting something like this. So I'm going to simplify things a little bit. Don't you love these two? I found these two last year. And I thought, oh, I, I must have them. And they will be on my desk for, the, for this uh, Christmas project. I love them. So you two little foxes, you watch 
watch me doing my uh, painting. But this little bell is going to, uh, I hope, show me how to simplify um, the shiny areas on the bells and making making it looks look well relatively um, accurate. So what I see, I see under over here. Let's put that. Oh, let's oh let's do it like this. Here is my uh, kneaded eraser. Yeah, that's working. It's a bit... Um, it's a hassle. Well, I think I see something like this. Over here, the right side... is quite light and then there is a darker area and then there is this very bright area and what you see here actually is um, the window here on the right side I'm not upstairs in the Passion for Pencils headquarters. I am uh, downstairs in the living room. Now over here on the left side, I hope you can see that first there is quite a dark area. And then there is this lighter area. And if I Look, you can see that my hand being reflected in this little bell. So here is a darker sliver and then a lighter one and then this medium tone. So there's a lighter one, a darker one, a lighter one and a medium tone. Now what I'm going to do, I have to protect the lightest areas and uh, the thing is, I was not planning on using masking fluid, you know, the stuff that you can use, but I'm trying to do, uh, to do it without. In a later stadium I might have to uh, erase Things. So over here in the bell, there is a darker and a lighter area as well, but then I see light here. We will just see how things will work out. So if you sketch over here a highlight, that's the most important thing, that highlight. I will do a little bit of erasing here inside. You know you can always make things darker with uh, watercolor, but making things lighter is quite difficult. Most of the time it's quite impossible. Now the other. The other one is a little bit different. It's more like this, so let's see what it, is it the same? It's a little bit different, I think you can see that over here, there's a shimmer over here, and then there's a darker spot over here, and then over here things are lightning, lighting up again, and here there is a line. I'm just trying to find the right spots. Now, if you weren't sure yet, by now you know 
seeing me doing this that I am not a professional watercolor artist. This is a color along really about um, exploring and finding finding our way with that beautiful watercolor uh, stuff. Looks a bit like this. Let's do that here as well. So, I thought I was uh, recording. So, these little uh, foxes stay off the paper because I'm going to make this paper very wet. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add a lot of water to the paper, except for the lightest parts of the bells, I want to keep them white for now. So I will leave them dry, but the rest of the paper will be completely wet. And uh, then I will splash color in it. Here is my uh, little jar of water and uh, my brush 24, it's a big one. You can uh, use a smaller one if you want, no problem, or an even bigger one, that's good too. Look, there's a lot of water. And I think I will have to move quickly. So I'm first going to work here around the areas I the highlights so I keep the highlights dry picking up extra water doing the same here if you make a mistake and there accidentally color enters your highlights then there is no that's not a huge problem but I'm trying to keep them dry. Now I'm just picking up extra water and moving that here. I'm, I'm having a problem already. Maybe I should use uh, masking fluid, but well, just adding the water. And look at that uh, the graphite is uh, staying uh, where it where it belongs. So that is good. I've been trying this met method in the watercolor along project that is coming uh, in a couple of, well, I hope weeks, but it could be six to eight weeks. And uh, some of the drawings I am working on with this same loose way of painting. Now, this, uh, this amount of water, it's a lot of water, makes the pe the paper buckle but there are several ways of unbuckle buckling the paper i saw one on the uh, youtube that i'm going to try so there's a lot of water now over here now let's be quick here's my painting palette and uh, i can tell you the names that i will be using um, I'm going to use a water brush. You can use any brush you want, but I'm going to use this one. It's quite a large one by Pentel. And I'm going to start with, um, well, what shall we do? I feel like a little bit of earth tones. How about this one? Raw Sienna. Picking up raw sienna, and I'm just going to splash that in. Not thinking about what it will do, 
whether it will work out. No, just splashing things in. Very light tones. Picking up a little more. Just like that. Now, there's a pool of water over here. Professional artist would not have this happening, but I do, so I'm uh, picking up a bit of the excessive uh, water. I love this color, burnt sienna. Let's bring that in. Just a little bit of that paint. Now you might think that woman is crazy. She is putting that color in areas where you really don't want to have these uh, earth tones. But maybe this is going to work. Now I'm going to start using a touch of blue and this is cerulean blue. And it has a slightly grayish tone, this particular cerulean blue. It is one uh, a cerulean blue, blue by the Rembrandt watercolor series. Professional watercolor. Let's just put that in. I think I am a little bit too careful. But, you know, I'm better safe than sorry. And I am immediately looking for balance. So I think we need a third dot, maybe even a fourth dot of blue. So I'm putting blue in an area where Later on I will add red tones, that's going to be interesting. So, um, How about a little bit of yellow? This yellow is a bit dirty. It is my uh, lemon yellow. I have two lemon yellows in my palette. Exactly the same color, but because I am using it quite often, it tends to uh, stain, you know, I never clean my brushes well enough, so it gets stained and, uh, well, but that is not a big problem. So I'm just putting in all those beautiful colors. I can feel that the paper is already drying. So I really, really should be uh, The problem is if you leave it dry and you continue these first layers, you will always see where you stopped and where you Start it again. Very difficult to uh, make it smooth and even. Picking up a little bit more of this yellow, beautiful, bright yellow. Squeezing my brush so more water will come out. And uh, let's go for a phthalo blue. That is quite a strong blue, but I think it's going to work. Don't be afraid of all those colors.
Let's take a look. I think we need uh, red in the background. How about French vermilion? That is a very strong red. It's over here. Very strong. And let's put that in. Ooh, very strong. As you can see, the water is evaporating very fast. So I'm squeezing my uh, water brush to keep things uh, flowing. And that is the beauty about these water brushes. Once you are get used to them, you can uh, do great things with them. I am not using water brushes all the time. And actually I am hoping that one day they will be able to make water brushes with the original um, hairs, like finest red sabre, you know, the natural hairs. That would be absolutely fantastic, because then you would have the best of both worlds. Look here, it's going to mix already. Taylor Blue and this French Vermilion. Let's add a touch of water here. Now, I don't want things to become muddy. So I am a bit careful with things mixing too much. So I'm picking up excessive paint now. But I do want things to smooth out a little bit. So now my camera can be a bit um, wobbly because I have it in my right hand because I want to show you exactly where I am without continuously having to stop the recording, changing the position of the camera and so on. So I hope you can forgive me for... Uh, I have to stay out of these uh, the lightest areas of the bells. So let's take a step back. Just squeezed my water brush and more water is coming out and I can distribute the paint here. Well, this looks interesting. So, I will leave this now to dry and then I will come back to you.